I became aware of uh, the work going on at the University of Southampton, oh, perhaps 10 years ago, uh, through publications by some of the faculty here, and uh, particularly meeting faculty members at conferences where a number of the faculty here actively participate in the international conferences in this particular area, which are held uh, from time to time. And uh, I made some friendships and uh, became increasingly uh, interested in what was going on here. Do you work with any particular research projects? I do, I do. I've been supporting a number of research projects here at the University of Southampton over the years, and currently we have a project going uh, involving the modeling of complex systems, uh, modeling uncertainty in complex systems, which is um, ongoing and being conducted by a couple, or overseen by two of the professors here, um, and I'm very, very pleased with the progress of this research. What are the secrets of success in, in handling these very unpredictable speculative markets? I believe, I, I mean, I think there is, um, there have been a great many of successful approaches and I can hardly speak for all of them, but I, I believe that uh, a combination of sound and theoretical analysis combined with uh, data-driven empirical research, I think one has to be uh, willing to roll up their sleeves and assemble the, the large, rich data sets that are necessary to really test and refine theoretical models on real-world data. I think the marriage of those two uh, abilities uh, is, the, is the secret to some of the more successful efforts that have been made. In a way, the more we know, the easier it is to predict these markets. Indeed, indeed, and I think testing one's theoretical ideas and adapting and refining uh, theoretical results to real-world data. Data is the flavor of the month, isn't it? We hear so much about large data sets becoming available more and more. Very much, very much. Uh, uh, you know, advances in um, computer technology and the internet have allowed the assemblage of data sets that were heretofore unthinkable um, back when data sets had to be manually um, assembled. Uh, data was a very precious commodity. Uh, you know, the early researches on horse racing involved data sets of only 200 races. Now 200,000 is a common size for a data set. So it's a, it's a whole new world in data-driven research. But the, the effort can still be considerable to assemble these big data sets. And that's sometimes where I think researchers can get lazy is in not spending, you know, being happy to work on the theoretical side of the problem, but not willing to undertake the sleeves rolled up efforts to assemble these large, rich data sets. And I, I think that's essential. A lot of work, but would you say it's an interesting, enjoyable, and as well as rewarding thing to do? Oh, absolutely. I, I find, uh, you know, there's nothing like the pleasure of seeing theoretical ideas tested on real world data and seeing the, the world behaving the way it theory says it should. Uh, this is quite a uh, quite a thrill and, and and something that you know I look forward to uh, you know hard work with uh, you know the pen and paper on theory and then the but the the, the 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 culmination of that effort and the real reward comes when one is able to test on a large data set the results of one's theoretical uh, calculations and and find it vindicated. It seems hard to believe that something that uh, sounds so unpredictable, like the results of a horse race, can be predicted if you've got enough data. Yes, indeed. In fact, uh, it, you know, that's a, um, a misconception that certain events which are popularly thought to be random or hard to predict, such as horse racing, is in fact one of the most predictable uh, you know, phenomenon that there is in the sporting world, that the, the results of a horse race can be predicted with uh, more um, accuracy and a greater ability to discern winners from losers than in almost any other sport. But it's evidently not easy or everyone will be doing it. No, it's not easy. Um, I, I, w I wouldn't say that. And one has to do it uh, accurately enough to overcome and, and to, to, to sort of outperform the, the ability of the, the general betting public in the horse racing markets who, who are effectively doing the same thing through the uh, uh, through the betting markets, and so you you have to make a serious effort at it. But if, if you do that, it's uh, it's remarkably predictable. It's uh, one of the surprising successes, and and this was really unknown at the time we first undertook this research, how predictable it really would be. Uh, 
and we were pleased to find that it was more predictable than anyone thought. Although that said, the bookies shouldn't be worried um, too soon. No, no. They, I think the bookies are quite capable of uh, protecting themselves and, um, and uh, you know, continuing to uh, yeah, profit in their business. What kind of research projects do you think uh, PhD students could get involved with here? I, there, there's a very rich set of things to explore. I mean, in one area is um, public betting behavior. Uh, it's, it's still, you know, very much an unknown why it is that the uh, public chooses to value certain types of information more than others, and what errors or patterns or um, anomalies there may be in public betting behavior. I think also the application of um, advanced, more advanced modeling techniques. I mean, statistics with the uh, current availability of advanced computing power, almost unlimited computing power available as it is today at universities like Southampton, that you can undertake statistical techniques and modeling approaches that would have been prohibitively computationally intensive in, in former times. And so there, there's methods and, and you know, approaches that can be used that are really quite exciting. And it's an area that students are interested in and enthused by? Indeed, yes. Yeah. So we, uh, I think uh, uh, my colleagues here and I would agree that, um, you know, that real world uh, applications uh, for things such as horse racing really excite the students in a way that some of the, uh, uh, the, the drier uh, problems um, in statistics don't quite have that capacity. Um, and I, I think as, a, as, a, as a, an introduction and a way to get students excited about um, statistics and about the possibilities of advanced modeling technologies, I think horse racing is a great uh, uh, introduction. But it's, it's more than that. It's a, it's a very interesting and robust area of, of, of research on its own. And I think it's helping that work being done on things like horse racing is actually helping to advance the state of the art in modeling techniques, hopefully with applicability to uh, a far wider range of real-world problems.